That's right. We are recording the session, so you will be able to listen to it afterwards. And you don't have to worry about taking too many notes at any point because we will make sure that we send the recording afterwards. All right, so I'm excited to talk to you today about what's going on in the marketplace here in Belize. We're going to be highlighting specifically condos and villas, what's available. I'm highlighting a few of the different regions in the country that we're finding are most popular for people who are planning to come down, live in this part of the world, or perhaps own from an investment perspective. So I do want to mention that this will probably be about 25, 30 minutes. So it'll be one of our shorter sessions, but we will take questions at the end. So if you find that Q&A panel, or you can go in the chat either, or we will be able to answer those questions for you at the end. All right, so let's just jump right in. My name is Rachel Jensen. I am the owner of Luna Realty Belize. Belize is home for me. I've been located here for about 10 years, originally from New York, but I got a job down here in the region working for an international real estate development company and was based in Nicaragua for a little bit, then Belize, then going back and forth between Panama and Costa Rica and El Salvador, Honduras, a handful of the countries here in the region. Ultimately, I decided to land here and stay here in Belize full time. This is where I live. This is home. Uh, this is where the dogs are. This is where, uh, where I really feel comfortable. And it, it feels like just a really wonderful place. And I just saw a report that was posted recently about being Belize being in the top 10 countries with the friendliest nationals or the friendliest locals. It is extremely true. It's one of the reasons why we find a lot of people start vacationing down here and then continue to come back year after year and perhaps end up owning real estate here. So I do hope you have a chance to come down and visit if you haven't been down here before. If you have been down here before, obviously you understand what I'm saying about the locals because you are here on the session. But I am also a board member for the Belize National Association of Real Estate, so quite active in the real estate space here today. So with that, we are going to highlight what's going on in the condo and villa market. We are going to cover uh, the country generally highlight about four different locations where we find that there are a good number of condo opportunities. We'll go through a few of those opportunities, and then from there, we'll have the open forum for your questions and answers. So I do want to give you an update. I'm giving this session, like I mentioned, this will be recorded, so this will be up on YouTube. So for those listening on YouTube, I do want to let you know that we're recording this session October 8th, 2022. Obviously, if you're listening at a later date, numbers may change. I will try my best every month to give these updates throughout the webinars, so certainly stay tuned. And I know for a lot of you, you are looking at ownership down the line. Perhaps this is really more of a discovery time for you over the next year or two years. Perhaps you're looking to retire or you need to save a little bit of money in order to get that dream home. So do note that these numbers are as of today. Obviously, they can change in the future. They likely will change in the future but I just wanna give you a little bit of an update about what's going on. So right now the average cost to build is about $140 US, that's US dollars, not Belize dollars. So, and that's really for a basic finish. Prior to COVID 2019, I'd say that the cost to build was about 90, $100 US a square foot. So a lot of this increase has come due from inflation, just an increase in cost generally. And uh, then also we all know during COVID, there was a shortage of a lot of materials. So those numbers have really skyrocketed in the last couple of years. I know it's not just true here in Belize. We've seen this countrywide or worldwide rather, and it is affecting all of the folks in the development perspective in the business realm as well. So I do wanna just give you that number and that's really just for the basic finishes. It does not include the land costs. It doesn't include the furniture or appliances, the building permits, if you're planning to add a pool, Anything, anything along those lines. So, you know, when you think about the space that you need, really factor in those numbers. If you want more of a luxury finish, high-end finish, you're probably looking at about a $165, $180 a square foot US. So a lot of times when people come down here to Belize, you know, I think in, in the States in North America, we're just so used to having everything like super sized, right? Homes, 3,000 square feet, 5,000 square feet, 10,000 square feet. Down here, you'll see a lot of times that properties are downsized compared to what we're used to in North America. So you'll tend to find that a two bedroom, two bath for 800 to 1,000 square feet is fairly normal. A one bedroom about five, 600 square feet is fairly normal. Now I'd say normal, but of course there are always exceptions to that. I'd say it's average, right? There's always higher, there's always lower, but you do tend to see a lot of times people downsize when they come. They don't have all that extra stuff, for example. So think about those numbers, think about what it is that you need, and that's for new construction today. So you may want to consider 
buying a resale property, if you jump down a couple of bullet points there, you may want to consider a resale property because at that point they're you know, making a profit, I'm sure, in what it is that they purchased for, but perhaps they bought and built 10 years ago or 15 years ago. And at that point, the build to construct was a lot lower. So bear that in mind. I do also want to make a mention that the minimum wage is slated to increase here in Belize. So right now it's $3.75 Belize dollars and it's jumping to five Belize dollars an hour. And that's minimum wage there. So you know, typically the skilled laborers do get more than that. But I do like to mention this because this increase affects everything, right? Everything, even if it may not be the laborer who's working on your house, it is going to affect the person who's maybe making the nuts and the bolts in the factory or perhaps cutting down the trees in the in the forest to uh, to give you that that wood. So do really bear these numbers in mind. Um, and it's, you know, maybe not much compared to what you're used to. If you're from North America, it's about $2.50 US. But when you look at the increase there, it is significant and will affect costs. So understanding that, I mentioned to you that it may make more sense to, uh, to buy a resale or to own a resale because it's already constructed. And, and chances are that it was constructed at a lower price per square foot. And then I also do want to mention that financing is hard to come by. I've had a handful of people reach out recently and say, all right, we are able to put 10, we like this $400,000 home, but we can only put down 10%. Uh, a lot of times, if there is financing for a resale property, it is going to be through the seller. And sellers here typically will ask for 50% down. They want to see that you have skin in the game. You know, maybe there is a little bit of leeway to negotiate on that, but most of the time they will ask for 50% down. And then the payment schedule with the owners are typically, I don't know, anywhere between three to 10 years balloon period or financing period. So it's just not necessarily what we're used to when it comes to financing. Uh, it's very difficult for foreigners to get financing here in Belize with any local banks. Also banks in their home country won't want to finance on property outside of the country because they don't have any collateral. So do just bear this in mind. If your dream is to live down here in Belize or own real estate down here in Belize, Typically, a lot of the transactions do happen in cash, and I would always recommend making an offer. Perhaps you see a property that you really like, but you say it's $320,000 and you've budgeted $300,000. $300, I'd say make an offer anyway. See what they say. There may be some, some wiggle room there with the seller. So just understand that too, that it is fairly difficult to find financing. All right. So we're specifically talking about the condos and villas today. And so what makes a good condo? Right. I know a lot of times people are looking for something that is well built, it's well maintained. Um, that kind of brings us to point number three there. It's well maintained, but that also has to do with the HOA. Is there an HOA association? How healthy is the HOA association? Is there money in reserve? Are they scraping to get by? Do they have a stable board? Um, I know a lot of times people don't really want to deal with an HOA. They want to be able to own their structure. They don't want those ongoing fees. But at the end of the day, if you find a strong condo complex with a strong HOA, this will absolutely make the value of your property sustained. And the reason I say that is it's great that you're thinking about what it's going to be like when you live there, but always remember the, the future resale. There will most likely be a resale unless you're holding on to this for your kids and your great grandkids and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, they may want to sell. So you need to think about the resale value as well that's going to be associated with your complex. And if there's a great HOA there, then they're maintaining the property. They're painting regularly. There's just great general upkeep. Now, I would say always, I would highly advise understanding what the developer's vision was. We're going to jump back to point number one there. Understanding what the developer has as a vision for this property. You know, a lot of times I found properties here that are pre-construction. So you may be getting in on a condo that's not yet constructed, or perhaps they have uh, one or two buildings up and they're continuing to grow, or perhaps the complex is already completed. Understanding that makes a big difference. But at the end of the day, when you see that there is a developer that has a clear vision, understands what they want, they have a timeline and they also have the funds to complete it. That is going to make a, a huge difference. Uh, you know, we just did a tour yesterday, an open house yesterday with some real estate agents for a new development that's going up here in San Pedro. And one of the questions was, how do we know that this is going to get built, right? Because real estate agents, they are looking out for their clients. They want to make sure that the property is going to be a good fit, is going to get completed because they don't want to steer their clients in the wrong direction. And with this specific property, the developer was there. He's here, you know, 95% of the time. And he also has the funds to actually complete the project. And that's really huge. A lot of times developments here are not leveraged, right? So if the developer runs out of money, then 
you know, they're, they kind of just leave the project, but understanding that when you're going into a community, if it is pre-construction, understanding that the developer has funds, if it's already constructed, that's where I would take a look at the HOA, what's included in the HOA. I would highly recommend if you are owning a condo that there's exterior maintenance and upkeep, write this down, that there's exterior maintenance and upkeep included in that HOA fee, because you don't want to be the one responsible for having to paint, you know, the exterior or weed the front yard when it really should be included in the HOA there. Um, so understanding what is in those numbers and like we started out with it's just being maintained. You know, I when I say maintained, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the condos are upgraded all the time, right? There could be a nice condo that was built 15, 20 years ago. Maybe it's a little bit older in the inside, but the building is well maintained and, and kept up. And so a lot of that will play into your decision about what condo is right for you. Now, a couple advantages to owning a condo is that they do typically have an on-site management team. Uh, in most cases, it's a maintenance team. They'll make sure that the condos are kept up. And in a lot of cases too, they do have a rental management team that's there on site, able to help you out. If you're somebody who's looking to own a property from an investment perspective and you want to get your condo rented, this is a huge advantage for you is to be in a condo complex that has their Belize trade license, Belize tourism board license, uh, and then also their trade license, which are two requirements that are needed in order to put your home or condo in the rental market. A lot of times condo complexes already have a blanket one for the entire community. So you don't have to worry about trying to get all that. Uh, if you are somebody who is looking to rent out your house, I've had a lot of people say, oh, we wanna put on Airbnb or VRBO until we're ready to move there. Uh, please reach out. I just wrote a blog about this, what's required in order for you to put your home into the rental market here in Belize. There's quite a bit that you need to do for it. Typically, rental management companies will take care of that for you. But if you're in a complex like this, most of the times it's taken care of. Uh, in addition, security. And this is a big question I get a lot. So sometimes people come down and they don't know whether they want a home, a single family home, or they want a condo. I would highly recommend if you're not planning to live here full time, I would go the condo route. And the reason I say that is because you know, Belize, it's land of opportunities in the sense of somebody knows that you're not in your home for six months out of the year, or there's nobody taking care of it. They may go in, take that TV, bring it home, maybe gift it for the holidays. So you just like to know that it is being looked after neighbors as well. Um, personally, I have a rental condo here on Ambergris Key. I lived in it for a little bit, which is actually quite nice. If I ever needed you know, eggs or sugar or something, I could just go to the neighbor. I could go to the front desk whenever I had an issue with the condo. If maybe I needed uh, my, my toilet was leaking or something like that, I could just go to the front desk. But there was also security there from uh, the evening hours of 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., which I liked. But it was also, hey, if I get locked out of my condo, I know that I have somebody that I can reach out to that can let me in. And, and for me, that was really important. Um, also, amenities. This is a huge factor. If you are somebody who likes a pool, perhaps you like pickleball court, or you just like to have a gym or those, those sort of amenities, a lot of these condo complexes do have some sort of amenity. Most of them do have pools. And so then that just lists maintenance that you would have to have if you have a single family home. So there are certainly condo ownership advantages. And those are the top three there that I wanted to highlight on site management team security, and then also amenities. Now do note there are going to be some considerations for you as well. Let me move this. I don't know if you guys can see the text there. Okay, that should be better. And um, there are some maybe considerations for you to bear in mind as well if you do decide that you want to own a condo, for example, those ongoing fees. So we talked about HOA. Um, I have had people be like, nope, I don't want an HOA. I don't want to deal with it. Um, personally, I don't mind paying HOA fees as long as I know that the HOA fees are getting put towards the maintenance and the upkeep for that resale value. It's also one less thing that I have to do. If a tree falls down in the yard, I don't have to try to worry about finding somebody to clean it up. It's all taken care of. Um, so I just want to make sure you, you know that as a consideration that you will typically have HOA fees. If you are buying in a development or a complex that boasts no HOA fees, no monthly fees, uh, quite personally, I'd recommend running because what that means is it's going to then be up to the owners to come together, form some sort of committee and all agree on what it is they want to do to maintain. Uh, this happened here on Ambergris Key. One of my friends is living in a beachfront condo complex and there aren't many condos, maybe six or seven. And there's no HOA and the building desperately needed to be repainted. I mean, it looked really, really bad. It desperately needed to be repainted. And so one of the owners took it on herself to go to the different condo owners and some were living there full time, some weren't. So she had to get their information. 
and was asking people, hey, do you want to contribute a thousand bucks because we need to repaint the building? And, you know, I don't want to be the one to, to, to put all that cost out. And so some people said yes. And some people said no. Some people who weren't living there full time, they don't care what it looks like. Right. So for them, it just wasn't valuable for them to put their money towards that. And so I would say that's not a situation you want to be in. Uh, I have seen another condo complex here that wants 10 condos, no HOA. And then a developer came in, ended up buying the complex and did implement an HOA fee because the pool was empty and green. The building was 17 different shades of, of orange, yellow, pink. I mean, it was unbelievable. And there was just no resale value to it. So just remember that. Um, also the management fee, sometimes there is a rental, ma and most of the time, all the time, there is a rental management fee if there is an in-house company that's taking care of that for you. And then also maintenance fees. Sometimes, you know, if you're hiring the company there in the complex to come in and fix something that perhaps is broken in your condo, they do typically charge a little bit more for that, but at least, you know, it's going to get fixed. Also something for you to consider is the size of the complex and what sort of amenities they have. Uh, we've seen a lot of condos go up here on Ambergris Key, which you know makes sense in a way because this is where a lot of the tourism is based. So they need more accommodations, more, more places for people to stay and to own. Now, I would say that just be conscious of if you're buying into a development and they tell you they're going to build 300 condos, you know, is there really a need at this point for all of those condos? Is it pre-construction? Are they doing it in stages? Are they doing everything at once? understand what that is. And sometimes we like being in a more intimate sort of complex. We don't necessarily want hundreds of, of condos around. And you can see there are condo sizes that vary five condos to 300 or 350 condos. So understanding that and then the amenities. I mentioned this on the last slide there, but most places do tend to have a pool, not every place, but they have a pool and they'll maybe have pickleball courts. I've seen more pickleball courts go up or tennis courts or a gym. And so all of that, all of the amenities that you see are going to have a fee to keep up, to maintain. So typically that would be in the HOA fee, but if you go to a complex that has a huge pool, and I saw this at one of the properties that's kind of on and off again, on and off again construction here, their big feature for their property is this gigantic pool. I mean, it's probably the biggest pool I've seen here in Belize, but at the end of the day, if you're an owner here, your HOA fees are going to be extremely high because you are having to contribute to that upkeep of the pool. So understanding that, and then this kind of goes along, number three here goes along, what we were just talking about is, is there a demand in the marketplace for all of these condos? Um, you know, condos don't always have as quick of a resale as single family homes, for example. We do tend to find there are more condos on the market uh, at this point than there are single family homes, which just, you know, makes sense at the end of the day, because there are more condo complexes, which have multiple condos versus a single standing home. So um, if, is there a demand for it? And I think a lot of that, you know, also comes on your shoulders to understand what the market looks like. There's a lot of due diligence that I would highly recommend everybody do in Belize. Um, and I mean, not just Belize, but regardless of where it is that you're looking for properties. And the Belize Tourism Board, I just took a screenshot there. Belize Tourism Board does a great job at highlighting the statistics for tourism. So if you're buying a property from an investment perspective, come in and understand how many hotel rooms are in the area. Like, let's say I'm looking at Placencia. You're able to go to the Belize Tourism Board and you can kind of see, let me move my face there a little bit. So I highlighted here in the blue, the Belize Tourism. You can go to that on their site map, click down then statistics and you can scroll down on their page and they'll have a ton of statistics like how many hotel rooms are in Placencia, for example. How many people are going to Placencia and who are the people who are going to Placencia? And that's really important for you to know as you're looking at the investment market. Now, um, a lot of times developers or whomever are gonna tell you, yep, this is a great market. This is exactly where you need to be because they want you to buy the condo or own there. But if you're looking at the Belize tourism stats and you see that there are 1500 rooms in Placencia, but they're only getting 15% of the tourism and maybe Ambergris Key has 2,000 rooms, but they're getting 60% of the tourism, you see where there's a huge need for more rooms. So I would understand where it is you're buying, who's going to, who's there already, how many hotel rooms there are. If you're not somebody who's personally interested in renting out your home or your condo, you know, this is really for you to live or to spend a handful of months out of the year. Um, you know, maybe these numbers aren't as important to you, but thinking in the future, thinking resale, you do want to make sure that there is value to where it is that you are buying. And a lot of times I've seen people come in and buy with this anticipation of appreciation. They're buying in an area that's not super developed or they heard it's gonna get developed. Um, I would 
caution against that too. While appreciation is a great consideration when it comes to investments, it's very hard here to understand what's going to appreciate and in what year. Uh, because there is a different timeline that I think a lot of investors have compared to what the reality is of the infrastructure that goes into the country. So you may buy a piece of land today and think it's going to appreciate to a certain extent in five years because they promised roads, they promised utilities, and that may not happen for another 10 or 15 years. So you may have a difficult time then reselling. But um, just thinking about all of these considerations as you are looking at your property. So with that being said, I have about 10 or 11 different condos slash villas that I'm going to highlight to you today. Um, these are ones, most of, I think 99% of them are ones that I have personally been to over the years and do think that they are great opportunities for ownership. So if you have any questions about them, you can obviously type that there into the Q&A section. But what you'll also see is little numbers at the top of the screen. Just jot that number down and then send me an email afterwards if you would like more information on it. So we're going to start, we're not going through all of the districts today. Um, also, this is really just to be a quick comprehensive overview. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of each opportunity. So if there's something you want more information on, let me know. If there's something that you were hoping to see, but don't see it, do let me know that too. Um, because there are, are thousands of things in the marketplace right now. It's very difficult for an owner or a buyer to find all of the opportunities because there's no central MLS. Um, but that's the advantage of working with, with us folks who are in real estate. Uh, we can certainly help you find those, those different options. All right, so we're gonna start here with Amber Gris Key. Amber Gris Key is the number one tourism in the entire country. Uh, we did do an Amber Gris Key market study about a week or two ago. If you want a copy of that recording, just feel free to reach out. It's also there on the YouTube page where you're able to, to tune in. So we're going to start here with Ambergris Key. And I'm going to start in the price order here for Ambergris. Uh, this is a condo. It's located within a hotel complex that recently got branded as a Beth Western. It is a, 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 this condo specifically is already constructed. There are other pre-construction opportunities within this complex. So good for you to know that there is still construction happening. But these uh, is this is definitely the most reasonable condo that I have found with the upgraded features inside the local mahogany going for 150,000. It's located on the second floor, and you can see here uh, the pin. I should have made that map a little bit bigger, but you can see there in the pin is that it's not located on the beach. It's located about three blocks off beach. It takes about five six minutes walking to get from the condo complex to the water, and it's located in a really great location, about half a mile south of the heart of the downtown area. So very, very convenient spot for people to get to. So this one's going for 150. So let me actually move my picture again there because I don't think you can see the number. All right, so you see the number I was talking about before. It's number one. If you have interest in number one, just jot down that email address. You see there, info at lunarealtybelieve.com. And you can just write the numbers in the subject line and we'll get those details over to you. So uh, I'd say that this is probably the best and most affordable branded hotel option in Belize right now. Uh, starting well under $200,000 for a condo that is already constructed and is already there in the market. HOA is quite comprehensive, $222 a month. Uh, this is probably actually one of the most comprehensive HOAs that I've seen. It includes insurance, cable, internet, upkeep of the exterior, usage of the amenities, which inclu includes pool, a pool, a tennis court, which also has pickleball lines on it, which is neat. I love pickleball, so I've probably mentioned it a couple of times here, but I know there are other folks out there who also enjoy it. And, uh, and then they have a, a gym on site too. So great for somebody who doesn't wanna to have to deal with, with any of that, it's already there on site for you. Number two here is what I found to be the, the best new development that is getting developed. It's located just about a five minute boat ride from San Pedro downtown area. Uh, you're also able to take a road directly from Secret Beach, be there in about 15 minutes. So a lot of people have heard of Secret Beach before, it's a very beautiful beach on Ambergris Key, uh, but these con these condos start at about 200,000. And they have, you can see here in the picture, fourplex, but there also are single standing ones as well. And you can see here that there's a canal. And if you look at the bottom right um, fourplex over there, you can see that there is an overhanging deck and they do have that continuing down the line of properties over there in the single standing ones, which uh, is really neat too, because you're able to go right on your deck and it actually feels like you're you're there over the water and you're able to go fishing and, and really have that water view there. So these start under 200,000 and their HOA is $300 a month. And I'm not gonna break down the HOA for all of them. If you guys want more information about that, please please do let me know. 
All right, here is the condo, and this is more of a villa, I'd say, but this is probably one of the most unique opportunities I've come across. It is a single standing uh, two bed, one bath. And the part that is most unique is the fact that it is over the water. You can see here in some of the pictures there are plunge pool. This is a, a duplex here. This one's single um, two bed, one bath, but it does have a plunge pool. It also has swings. This is a huge area, flats for people who like fly fishing. There's a lot of bonefish over there. Also uh, snapper, we saw somebody who is doing some snapper fishing in that area. So you're able just to wait out, go fishing right over there uh, should you opt for that. But I'd say this is one of the most unique because there aren't any other two bed over the water opportunities here on Ambergris Key. And so we do find that this is uh, probably, I think gonna go pretty quickly. This one's about 350 and it does have an extra garage, which is at this point isn't being utilized but you are able to convert that to another bathroom if you want storage, whatever you want for that over the water. And this HOA is a little bit more expensive. It's four fifty dollars a month, um, but do consider that it does, it is over the water. So maintenance is a little bit more. If you're looking for luxury, uh, this is the best luxury condo I found, the most affordable luxury condo. It is 1,705 square feet, three bed, two bath. It's located in a hotel complex or re residential resort complex called Las Terrazas. And Las Terrazas, you can just Google them there. They are always in the top 10 condos or resorts on Amber Grisky. Uh, they were recently ranked as one of the best hotels in Belize by I think it was Congenast. And so there's always a publication about this property. Now these HOA fees are more expensive than anything we've seen. They're almost a thousand dollars a month. But I'd say that the price really compensates for this. Any other property that you find in a luxury condo um, resort with water, with water views and with amenities like this, easily going for six, seven hundred thousand dollars. So they understand that, and that's why the price is a little bit lower than you would find in, and it's a lot lower than any other luxury complex, is because you do have that HOA that's a little bit more expensive. All right, we're gonna jump over to Kyle. So I'm gonna just do, let me just do a quick recap there of the numbers. One would be the branded hotel. Two is the new development. Three is the over the water. Four is the luxury condo. So again, just jot down those numbers and then email, send me an email and I'll be able to send you the full listing for it. All right, so we're gonna jump over to Cayo. So uh, for those of you who've been on the line with us before, or you've done a little bit of research about the country, Cayo is located on the mainland. It is more of a jungle sort of environment. So we we're just on Ambergris Key, which is an island right over here. And now we're jumping over to Cayo, which is mainland. So uh, this is actually one of my absolute favorite hotels on the mainland in this area, Sleeping Giant. They recently have offered single family home ownerships and villas at the complex. Um, and so right now it's operating as a full functioning resort. It's more of a boutique, smaller, and they just pay attention to every single detail. The landscaping is absolutely immaculate. It's a beautiful rolling hills, jungle, hiking paths environment. They have citrus farms there. There's also horses there. So it's a really beautiful spot. It also has riverfront options. And, and these complex, this uh, opportunity here is for two or three bedroom. Some have pools, some have don't pool or don't have a pool. But uh, you can see here just one of the renderings and these are starting construction. So if you're somebody who's interested in a new construction in a resort that has proven that it is very well known and very well maintained, this could be a great option for you. These started about 300,000 and go up to about 550,000. There is owner financing available. So if this is something that you would be considering, do let me know. And what's nice about these properties is they can just be put right into the Sleeping Giant rental program. Uh, and Sleeping Giant, can Google all the places I'm telling you so you can see a little bit more about your own research for them, but Sleeping Giant is just an incredible property. If you're looking for a property that's more of an eco community and you wanna be by the river and maybe it's a little bit more farmland than it is compared to the other property, which was more of rolling hills and, and jungles. As you can see here, it's more of flat farmland, but there is the river right over there. And this one, while it's not necessarily a condo, it is a villa in a sense because it is within a development property. And I do like to highlight that because it is in a development, which means, yes, there is an HOA. It's about $110 a month, but it goes towards upkeep of the, the, the roads and the public services, also the clubhouse. So you do have that value of knowing that your property within this development is going to be looked after. You get your lawn mowed for you, upkeep generally, 
So a lot of good maintenance here. So there is a one bedroom, one bath going for about $150,000 there on uh, the mainland at Carmelita. So this is number six. Number five is the luxury complex at Sleeping Giant. Number six is the eco home community at Carmelita Gardens. So again, just jot those numbers down and I can get you all of those details. All right, we're gonna jump over now to Hopkins. So Hopkins is the light blue uh, pin here. It's about two hours south of Belize City. And you could take a, a, a car, drive down and, uh, and be there in about two hours. Hopkins is more of a quieter fishing village. Um, a lot of times I think people overlooked Hopkins and went to Placencia. So I do find that there's great opportunity in Hopkins now. Um, although, you know, people are discovering it, so it has gotten more expensive over the last couple of years. This is one of the best condo complex that complexes that is already developed at this point. It's where I, I've stayed there a handful of times. And it's this, this villa, it's a three bed, three bath, number seven that is getting sold at this point. It's going for $389. What's nice is this is a lock off. So you can actually rent it as a studio or you can rent it as a two bedroom. And so you have double the opportunities for rental income there, or you can live in it full time. Uh, should you choose, but this is a beautiful complex that's very well maintained. It's also already constructed, so you don't have to worry about any new construction, any noise from new construction. It is already there. And so if you see where it says Rum Shack at Hopkins Bay Resort, it's in that area there with Hopkins Bay, and it's located about five minutes um, from the downtown part of Hopkins. And there are many amenities there. You can see the beach. It's a beautiful coastline. Also, there's pools. There's a restaurant on site, and then you'll see that it is this sort of villa um, environment. That's number seven. I'd say that's the best condo complex there in Hopkins. The best luxury complex. This is a new development that's going up at Jaguar Reef. So Jaguar Reef is actually the sister resort to Sleeping Giant. And Jaguar Reef is probably the nicest hotel there in Hopkins, nicest condo complex. Because, excuse me, because Hopkins isn't really as developed as let's say Placencia, you don't tend to have as many condo there, condos there as you would have in Placencia or even Ambergris Key. So there aren't as many things available in terms of condos or villas in Hopkins, but the two that are there, Hopkins Bay and Jaguar Reef are, are just immaculately done. And um, this one is a two bed, two bath. This is pre-construction, actually under construction now, but if you do want to own, you can be on the first or the second floor. And the second floor, it's nice. It has a plunge pool over there overlooking into the distance a very, very well-maintained property. And this one does have owner financing available uh, if this is something that you would be interested in. All right, so we're gonna jump down to Placencia now over here. Uh, that's at the Southern part, so set more South of, of Hopkins. It's about three hours to get to Placencia from Belize City. And Placencia is a really uh, popular place for people who are looking for a quieter sort of lifestyle. And you can see here, if you look at the map on the right-hand side, there is, a, a, Placencia is a peninsula. So you can see that there's a lagoon here to the west of, of Placencia and Maya Beach. It's this area over here. And then you have the coast there of the Caribbean on the right-hand side on the east side. So there are a lot of waterfront opportunities in Placencia because you have both the Caribbean and you have the lagoon. If you're on the lagoon, then you'll have the sunset. If you're on the Caribbean side, then you'll have the sunrise. Uh, but I'd say this is probably one of the, the best priced new construction. And do bear in mind, new construction is going to cost you more than something that's a resale because it's a huge increase in price per square foot. But here there's one bedrooms. They're smaller in size, 375 square foot, but they're starting at about $210,000 for the first floor. Then up on the second floor, you at about 240. And you will tend to find that condo prices are not even across the board that if you're on the first floor, they tend to be a little bit less, the second floor a little bit more, the third floor even more than that, because you're typically paying for the views, right? The higher you go up, the better the views are gonna be, the more value that there is to the condo. And again, thinking that value, thinking the resale value, that's going to be important. Your location in a development is also going to be important when it comes to resale. So there could be a hundred condos in that complex, but if you have one of the best locations, Yes, you'll be paying a premium for it, but you'll also have a better chance at resale down the line. So that would be the best new construction. I would say the best value uh, is Umaya. There are two bed, two baths here going for under 300,000. There are a handful actually uh, going for under 300,000. This is on the lagoon side. So you will have views um, of the sunset and then also the lagoon you can see here on the bottom left, that's a view from the restaurant area. But as you look out, you still have that really beautiful water view there. 
It's a two bed, two bath, 1100 square feet. There is owner financing available if this is something that uh, you would be interested in. All right, best luxury is Itana. And this is a beautiful, beautiful resort within the Placencia area. They have villas, they have condos, and there is the option for a two bed, two bath, large home, large villa, about 2,300 square feet. Uh, there is owner financing available for this specific one. Again, not all resales have owner financing, but it just depends on which property it is that you're looking at. And so this actually is a good zoom in of the Placencia area. So we have um, Maya Beach, which is located on the north side and then Placencia town a little bit closer to the south. And so do you hear people say Placencia? They may not necessarily be talking about this specific area, but it may be within this whole peninsula here. So uh, this is located a little bit south of the Maya Beach and north of Placencia downtown area. This one's going for 550. Uh, this is a property that's very, very well maintained. The landscaping there is immaculate. The homes are beautiful and well done, well constructed. So you are going to pay more for that, that luxury. And you also are on the waterfront there. So important to note when it comes to uh, location. So I know we just buzzed through those opportunities. Let me just go back to the Placentia numbers here. So nine is the new construction, the one bed. Um, for starting at 210, we have the best value complex at Umaya, which is the option number 10. And then number 11 is the best luxury complex in Placencia, and that's Sana. So, um, and it says Lagoon Front, I apologize, that should say beachfront there, that is on the, the coast side of the peninsula. So we do have a handful of other webinars coming up. And I would love for you to join us if you are able to make these dates. Even if you're not able to, I highly recommend you still register for them. You'll get a copy of the recording afterwards for anybody who's looking to move down to Belize or own property. Those first two in the educational series, the residency overview and the Belize closing process are uh, definitely ones that you want to be joining us for. And you can register, I see the, the URL there, lunarealtybelize.com backslash webinars. And then we will go through some more developer properties and then also eco homes on November 5th. So a lot coming up. Uh, I know I just buzzed through those and what we'll do is open the floor to questions. Oh, but first let's do that poll. All right, launch the poll. What is your ownership timeline look like? When do you want to own? And the reason that I ask this is because it is important for me as I'm sending you options to know when it is you would like to own because opportunities, you know, especially in real estate, they're always coming and going. And so something I show you today probably won't be available in a year, but at least it helps me to understand what your ultimate timeline would be. All right, so it looks like I'll give you five, four, three, two, and one. All right, perfect. It looks like most people are looking in over a year, but I'm glad you're doing your market research. It's good for you to understand the different areas, the different sort of opportunities that are available so that you are able to make educated decisions down the line. All right, so with that, we'll open the floor to any questions. And then I would just highly recommend sending me an email if there's any other property you saw that you would like a little bit more information about. Info at Luna Realty Belize is the best email address. I'm gonna go back to that webinar schedule too. So you can take a look at that and see if there's, there's anything that you would like. Um, I do wanna mention that the Cayo District, I know a lot of folks here have been asking about the Cayo District and it is an area that you do, don't tend to find a lot of condo opportunities there. There are more uh, opportunities for parcel ownership or lot ownership. So you'll own a lot within a development and then you could build a home, whether it's a, a tiny home or a larger home. That's how a lot of the opportunities are in Cayo now. So I would recommend if you are interested more of that condo sort of style, do let me know and I'll let you know when new things become available. And then also I, I do recommend just that development. I think a lot of time, a lot of times we like to have um, people take care of our, our stuff for us. But if you're somebody who likes to be out there doing it, taking care of everything, you'll be here full time, then you know, maybe you will be looking at that single family home ownership. But do just let me know that. All right, guys, I know it's a, a Saturday here and you probably have some things to do. So this is being recorded. We'll send you out a copy of the recording afterwards. And do let me know as any questions pop up, info at Luna Realty Belize. And I look forward to having you on the next session with us. Bye everyone.